Hello, my name is Ed Adams. I'm here to give you some training on the Kaizen template uh, through the Miro application. So let me give you a quick start guide. So there's just a few things that you, you know have to know about Miro. Uh, first is to navigate. So to zoom in and out, if you have a mouse with a uh, wheel in the center of it, if you scroll up and down, you can do this. So uh, you'll be doing a lot of this. So practice doing that. Uh, if you have a, if you don't have a mouse but you have a trackpad, you can you can uh, use your fingers to zoom in and out by pinching your fingers. Uh, you can go left and right like I'm doing here. If I press the right mouse button, I can go up and down. Or you can use the space bar and use the mouse to move around. Uh, so this is a virtual whiteboard. So if, if you want to invite a team to your virtual whiteboard, here's how you do it. You click the share button. And then you would type in their email and then you could invite them to the virtual whiteboard. One of the things you'll be doing a lot of is creating electronic yellow post-it notes. And to do that, you would click this, you just pick the color and you just drag it and then you can type in there. I'm gonna type the word test. Simple as that. You can move it. You can make it smaller. You can de delete it. Here's an undo button. You click that. See how it came back. One more thing I want to tell you about is uh, locking and unlocking. So you notice how I can move this here. I can lock it in place. So if I if I click this lock button here, it's locked. It won't move. So if you're in a situation where you need to move something around, just click it and then go unlock and now it'll move. So that's basically all you need to know uh, at this point as far as using Miro. I'm gonna get into the application now. So there's many templates in here and this is the high level view. I, I, let me start from the left there. So uh, this is my LinkedIn profile. You can reach me that way if you'd, you'd like. I also have a uh, this this training video here on YouTube. You can click that, and it, it will uh, give you like a 10 to 15 minutes of training on on this on this Kaizen template. This template is designed to go from left to right and from top down. So let me start over here, and I'll finish with over here. So with let me start with this first slide right here. I'm going to talk about the Kaizen steps. So before you do a, a Kaizen, you wanna have pre-planning about two to four weeks before the Kaizen event. You wanna draft the problem statement with the sponsor, you wanna collect baseline data, and you wanna obtain buy-in from the sponsor, identify team members and schedule the Kaizen, and start drafting the project charter. So that's where we're at right here. And then you, uh, once you're into the Kaizen event, you have the team, you do, the, you do a Gimba, you make a flow chart, once you have a flowchart, you identify pain points and bottlenecks. Once that's completed, you, you do root cause analysis and you do brainstorming, fishbone, five wide, Pareto. And then you go to solutions or you do brainstorming, any diagram and benefit versus effect matrix. Then you use this step. Once you know which solutions you're doing, you implement the solutions and you put into an action item log. And there's also a section where you can put quick fixes and there is a section for parking lots, which are used for those things that are maybe scheduled for maybe a future Kaizen or things that you're not gonna um, deal with at this point. The last step is very important is to standardize and sustain. Standardize is where you, you lock in the gains uh, for the process improvements. Maybe it's updating your procedures, it can be in training and make sure that you're, you're doing monitoring of the process uh, so that you can see whether you're winning or losing. So you'll use a, a bowler chart, and make a new process map. And then uh, there's a, a, a standardized checklist that you can fill out. I'll show that to you in a little, little few minutes. And then there's communication plan on how you communicate to your stakeholders. So this is a high level way um, I run a Kaizen and it's kind of a template for the entire Kaizen template. So in this section right here, let me zoom out. All the section in here, uh, if you want to do a little bit of training with your, your team would be in this section right here. There's a lot of great material. Here's Kaizen principles, ground rules you would do uh, during the Kaizen. 
Here you have the seven forms of waste, five S. And then I have uh, roles and responsibility in a Kaizen. You have the champion, process owner, facilitator, and team members. Uh, benefits from Kaizen. And then some of the pitfalls I've learned over the uh, several years I've done Kaizen's. Great material. Then also I have uh, training links. So for example, if you want to watch a YouTube video on fishbone diagram, you can click on that. Uh, there's several videos here. 5Y, fishbone, and Kaizen. So that's what this section is here. This next column right here has to do with the Kaizen team. So when the team at the end of the day reflects on how things are going, they'll list their positives, which means what went well. And then they'll talk about what opportunities they have to improve. And so you can use this template right here. So I would do this at the end of each day. Many times in uh, Kaizen, you'll have icebreakers. So here's a couple that you can pick from. Here's a section where you put, you put team pictures. You can uh, easily paste them into there very easily. Um, sometimes you'll take a uh, polling or vote votes for your Kaizen and there's three different ways you can do that. So, um, we'll love that in there. So, uh, let me move to the next section. So before Kaizen, uh, there's a lot of pre-planning and this takes like two to four weeks to plan. So what I've done is I have listed all these steps right here. And if you zoom in, you can see, these are all the things that you need to review and get completed before the Kaizen starts. I try to make it very simple. And then down here, here's some other additional considerations you may wanna look at before your Kaizen. From there, uh, here's a list of a, a standard agenda you can have in a Kaizen. It's all laid out. You just It's just like uh, making a cake, you just follow the script. But if you wanna make changes to it, that's not a problem. I'm just kinda making it very easy for you. And you see these numbers right here, you see that one? That corresponds to this one over here. So the first step is the define stage. And that one matches with this, and then this two matches with circle two. You see, I got day one and day two. Um, I'll leave it to you if, if you wanna leave, leave that there, but um, um, to get through this entire process, you can most of the time get, get done with it in about two days. Uh, if you're if you're rushing really fast, you can, might be able to get it done in one day. Okay, let's go into the first step. Your first step is to complete the project charter. And that's under the define section right here. This is just a very typical project charter where you start with a problem statement, goals, output metric, obstacles. You put the key stakeholders, the team members, and then cost savings rationale. So that's the first section. The second section is the current state, and there's two tools for that. One is Gimba Walks, and the other is flowcharts. So when your team uh, wants to understand the process, uh, you should probably look at these questions right here. You'll go look at the process, and maybe there's, these are some questions that you could ask people uh, when, you're, when you're out talking to people. When you get back from your Gimba, uh, you can use these post-it notes to write your comments on, and then here's the seven forms of waste and then you would match up whatever you heard to whichever form of waste that corresponds to. And then, but if you have a, just a, give me an observation that it really doesn't fit in any of those categories, you can put them down here. After you get that completed, you do a flow chart. I've just kind of created a generic one right here. You can move these around, see how I move that. You can delete them, but uh, you can either copy and paste into this section here, or you could just uh, one by one, create your process steps. Once you're done with that, then you'll uh, ask yourself where are the pain points and then you could maybe you could put a post, uh, let's say step eight was a pain point, you could just leave that there. And you also want to look at where are the bottlenecks. Another form of flowchart is the swim lanes. You see there to the left, you see the, the different uh, areas and what step they're responsible for. So you can use that one if you want. There's also a flow chart that has a timeline on it too. So it shows like operator one is working on day one and then his next activity is on day five. So it's just an option if you'd like to use that. So we, we have just completed current state. Again, current state is the gimbal walk and the flow chart. The next section is root cause analysis. And so you have three tools there. You have brainstorming, the affinity diagram, 
the Fishman diagram, and you have one more, the 5Y analysis. So what, what's nice about this template is uh, I make, make it e very easy to, to follow. And so here's some questions that uh, might, might help you when you get into the stage right here. But when your team does brainstorming, everybody will join in and they can put their brainstorming in this section right here. And so you may see this section right here, just full of maybe 20 to 30 ideas on what the root cause is. Once you finish that, then you move to the affinity diagram. And what that means is you're grouping all these post-it notes into different sections. It's grouping, that's, that's what the affinity diagram does. After you've got that completed, you'll wanna complete a Fishbond diagram and you put, you'll put type in your problem statement right there. And then you put it in these categories, uh, measure, material, man, method, mother nature, machine. And you see these move around and you just type into these boxes uh, for the various causes. You then do the five Y analysis. Now I'm not going to exp explain every single tool here, but uh, uh, this should be obvious how, how to use this. You put your problem statement in, and then uh, you put your answer there, and then you ask why, and then you, you put your answer, and then you say why is that, and you fill this out. So that's the five Y analysis tool. So we've completed the root cause analysis section. Now you go to the solution section, and you first start with brainstorming, and then here's some helpful notes to help you in that section. You can put your brainstorming uh, solutions in this section here. And then you can do your affinity diagram. And then you have the benefit versus effect matrix. And then um, you probably wanna look at this table here to define what is considered low and high. Ideally here, you, you want to do the quick wins where you have high impact and low effort. So at this point, you pretty much know which solutions you're going to be doing. The next phase is to implement. So uh, this is where you're going to be listing the actions that you're going to be doing. So it's just an action list. You put you, you type in the action. Uh, if you want to put in the priority, you can. Who's responsible for that? The due date and status. And you can use these symbols up here if that if you find that helpful. So also another tool here. Uh, it's pretty simple, but it's a quick fix. So if, if you just have some real quick things that you can get done, you can put it in this section here. The next section here is parking lot. Parking lots for those things that you're gonna to put to a side. You may not do it in this Kaizen, but you want to at least, uh, you didn't wanna lose that thought. So parking lot is for those things that will just sit there for now. Maybe it'd be for a future Kaizen. Okay, so we we talked about the implement stage and the last one is very important. It's called standardize and sustain. So it's got a few tools in it. So you have the bowler chart that tracks your metrics over time and uh, Hopefully you're, you're meeting your goal and uh, you may have just one metric you're tracking or two. So right now it's set up for two. In the section, that, then you also create your, your flow chart, but this is for your new process. Pretty simple there. And then this is your, you, you, wanna, you wanna standardize your, your new process. And so here's a checklist of things that I, I thought of that would be good for you to answer here. And I'll just give you some examples. So uh, is there any procedures that you need to update? Any other documentation you need to update? Uh, does anybody require training? And then who's monitoring the process? So I have a series of questions here uh, that I think uh, is a good reminder so you don't forget that you need to lock in uh, your, your new process. Down here is the communication plan. So you wanna make sure that you have good communication with your stakeholders and your team. And so you just answer this question here. What do you wanna communicate? Who's getting it? What is the delivery method? Uh, when does the communication happen and the owner? Okay, so I quickly went through the entire template. Now, uh, as you can see, it's it's blank. So this is a blank one. Uh, if, if I scroll back out and I move to the right here, I do have a case study and uh, this case study is making toast. And so uh, it's just an example that you can follow uh, and you can see how I filled out the various templates. You can see how I, I did the project charter uh, and I went through the current state, did root cause analysis, did the solutions. I put my actions and you can see there my, my polar chart, my new flow chart. And you can see that for standardization checklist, I filled all that out. Okay, so uh, there to the right is a case study and then here's a blank template. What I recommend is a uh, uh, once you get into here, you create a copy of this so that you can have your own. 
but uh, this concludes the uh, the training for the Miro Kaizen template.